Well, it must be 5.45 p.m. Eastern time on your clock, and it must be Channel 8 on your Comcast cable dial. Uh, that means it's time for BCTV's weekly media roundup, 5.45 Live, a jam-packed 15-minute thrill ride that sums up all the local headlines, area events, and everything going on at uh, BCTV, Brattleboro Community Television here in downtown. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyd, and I'll take you through the next 15 minutes as we get set for a live uh, remote broadcast from the balcony here. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping you can uh, see, because I can't really see anything. We've uh, put up uh, these huge uh, fill lights here to uh, compete with the stage lights uh, behind me, but uh, we'll be continuing to move through our broadcast here. We'll do all the regular clips and series that we usually do. We'll be uh, remote streaming it to BCTV's YouTube channel and thus onto our Comcast cable channel as well. All right, uh, tonight, see if I can actually, uh, just with the touch of a button on the laptop, uh, roll the coming up next. There it is, uh, Brattleboro Film Festival is where we're going to start. That's right, uh, here at the Latches, they've got their opening reception and it's going on for uh, another couple minutes or so. If you want to come on down and check it out, then they'll be throwing together a uh, three film uh, screening tonight and we'll go through the next three weeks with 30 films part of the film festival plus that BDCC Sevids uh, hearing uh, that was this week on a post BY economy funny that that topic might interest people we'll talk uh, about that and we'll follow up on the five alarm fire of last month that swept Elliott Street uh, it uh, took out a three and a half story apartment complex and left 17 residents homeless find out what's going on with them as we check in as part of our Commons report plus we'll get weather from BUHS TV the high school's morning news advisory broadcast and now sports courtesy of uh, Landmark College's broadcast journalism class all that and more I'm gonna do it in 15 minutes from the balcony uh, in front of the enormous spotlights here so if you've got the time and the attention span give us a chance stick with us right here on, so I get ready to click the button on 5.45 Live. Breaking news out of Boston, the Boston Red Sox have won the World Series. Let's get things started with the World Series and the Red Sox who won it all this year. They have great hitting, leadership, and I experienced that win on Game 6 on Wednesday night, five rows from the first baseline. It was electric, just seeing the smiles on people's faces. Back to this. Welcome back to this inaugural November 1st edition of 545 Live as we broadcast live from the Latches Theater and Brattleboro Film Fest kickoff as part of Gallery Walk. Now that's footage from Clutch, a sports roundtable from the students of Landmark College's broadcast journalism class. They've joined BCTV's staff uh, up in our 230 Main Street studios uh, in producing a uh, series of live and pre-recorded news content sections uh, for this fall's lineup, including a review of this week's enormous news that the Boston Red Sox can now once again be known around the area as World Series winners. All right, uh, with that, we'll launch into uh, the top headlines here and of course uh, our venue behind us the Latches Theater means uh, it's worth taking a look at uh, with the Brattleboro Film Festival kicking off uh, here launch into this packed to the gills edition of 545 live from out in the gallery walk scene start with gallery walks premiere event the launching of the Brattleboro Film Festival which in just its sophomore year has added an, added an additional uh, 11 days and 28 movies to its roster. Starting tonight with a triple header that includes one of my top picks for this year's Best in Fest, The Rocket. I think we always had the intention of a, being a bigger festival. Last year we just, we just launched it, a right. smaller thing, and it was very, very successful. So we were well on our way to having a much bigger festival this year, and, and we've really pulled it off. Into that for uh, more on the wide array of comedic, tragic, heartwarming, remarkable uh, mix of animated documentary drama, award-winning, even Oscar contending films. The festival's hard-working uh, committee members have put together this year uh, and also how to find out how to volunteer, uh, work the, uh, the ticket booth for a show and get in to see them for free. You can find out all this information at Brattleboro Film Festival, all one word, dot org, or watch BCTV's uh, full half-hour roundtable interview with four of the festival's committee members, which includes trailers for those movies, or come down uh, and see the trailers for yourself, uh, get some light refreshments, socialize, uh, all here at the Latches part of their kickoff event. 
uh, before heading into a triple header tonight. All right, uh, with that, we'll move on now in the stories back into the newsroom. Close up, second camera will go to talk VY. It means the graphic over the shoulder. Moving on, it's a topic that's no stranger to 545 Live's evening roster. Our fair state's lone nuclear reactor, Vermont Yankee, whose Louisiana based owners Entergy added an additional dose of the limelight for the fall season after their August announcement that they would be closing the controversial Vernon based plant, effective quarter four of 2014. That's just about a year from now. Uh, that's a good 18 years earlier than a twice backed, uh, federally backed license from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission would have allowed for, leaving plant workers and business owners, investors, taxpayers, and everyone else uh, across this region scrambling uh, to figure out how this will fit in with the local economy. That's uh, part of the theme of a uh, Sevens BDCC, or Broadboro Development Credit Corporation, and uh, Southeastern Vermont Economic Development Strategies Group joint hearing uh, on the subject that happened this past Monday. And thanks to hardworking BCTV volunteer uh, Maria Dominguez, we uh, have the footage. Let's take a look. The resources that the state has directed in the past to the closing of Vermont Yankee certainly need to be directed to helping the communities around Wyndham County. The solutions moving forward need to be just, they need to be equitable. The purpose of the meeting was to have folks from Montpelier come down and get a better understanding of what we in Wyndham County need and what Vernon needs as far as assistance from the state. Uh, when Vermont Yankee leaves, it's going to be a catastrophic result for the state and especially for Vernon. And we're grateful that the committees are here and we were able to present them our strategies and our work to help rebuild the Wyndham County economy, which will help Vernon, Brattleboro and all the communities in the region. That full hearing from Sevens and BDCC on a post-VY uh, economy in this region can be found at brattleborotv.org to stream. And of course, if you're watching this online, there was even a clickable link during the clip. All right. Move on here, and uh, for that, it's back into the stories, back into the close-up, and we'll get the graphics as well. Next up, a five-alarm fire that destroyed a three-and-a-half-story apartment complex on Elliott Street last month has left 17 area residents homeless, and with winter fast approaching, a local contingent has taken up the cause to help assist the victims of the blaze with meals and funds raised in private across the area, something we now turn to this week's issue of the Brattleboro Independent newspaper, The Commons, for more on. Uh, with Commons editor Jeff Potter himself uh, writing this week of the exploits of Brattleboro resident Bethany Thighs, who, backed by the local chapter of the Red Cross, has assembled a, quote, easy daily menu of meal options for families left without access to a kitchen after the fire, something she hopes will help steer them clear of, quote, spending money they don't have on $50 dinners at Friday's. Next up, a renowned local surgeon whose medical license came under fire in 2011 from the state of Vermont has now received their highest honor. For that. All right, moving on. It was just two years ago that premier area surgeon John Bookwalter found his medical license under fire from the Vermont Medical Board. Now he finds himself the recipient of the Green Mountain State's highest honor in the field. And while the longtime local doctor says he's humbled to be receiving the Distinguished Service Award from the Vermont Medical Society, it's as much about their admitting their mistake and restricting his license as it is about recognizing his work. Something he was more than a little okay with when he joined us in our downtown studios this week to talk about it, remarking that his love of medicine has made it easy for him to pursue his remarkable career citing his family, friends, and co-workers as the tough sledders truly deserving of the award. We have a wonderful staff here in Brattleboro, wonderful guys, guys that it's a pleasure to work with, who do their best to take care of sick people. And uh, it's an honor and it's humbling to be picked out from among them to get this award because everybody on that staff, one way or another, has earned it at some time. Bookwalter first made his mark on the international medical arena in the late 70s with the invention of the Bookwalter Retractor, a mechanical a surgical device uh, re-patented in 1991 that's spent the better part of 25 years at work in nearly every hospital across the country. All right, we'll move on now on a somber note. This coming weekend marks the 75th anniversary of the Night of Broken Glass, or Crystal Night, as it is in German. Not one night, in fact, but three. Uh, all back in November of 1938 in Germany, after the murder of a German official in France at the hands of a 16-year-old Polish Jew prompted violent demonstrations uh, all across Germany. 
as the SA burned synagogues, vandalized Jewish cemeteries, ransacked Jewish homes, and smashed the storefronts of thousands of Jewish businesses, serving to earn Crystal Knight its name and uh, to bring to the international spotlight the world's first look at the anti-Semitism brewing under Hitler's rule. A historical landmark many scholars now believe provided a pivotal turning point in Germany's move toward the systematic mass murder of six million Jewish men, women, and children across Europe. And while the Jewish men beat to death in their homes and in the streets during the night of broken glass proves no less tragic, it was the 30,000 Jewish men arrested and placed in concentration camps during that three-day stretch that proved the deadliest action, says Robert Stack, a licensed mental health counselor and local media personality who's studied alongside renowned Holocaust scholar and author Emeritus Raul Hilberg. And this occurred over two, two or three days. And meanwhile, women were being raped, men were being detained, houses were being ransacked, uh, bonfires in the streets. It just wasn't right. And one of the things that happened was the decision that from now on, what was going to be done to the Jews would be legal. And it would be done by decree. It would be done, and they would be careful. They would decide who was Jewish and who wasn't Jewish. And they would do it in a way that would maximize the benefit for the Third Reich. Now, Next Thursday, the Cohen Center for Holocaust and Genocide Studies at Keene State College will host a Crystal Night Remembrance Talk. It's at the Colonial Theater at 7 p.m and includes a, a first-hand account from Holocaust survival Michael Barenbaum, something uh, Robert Stack urged area residents of all faiths and interests to get out and see again next Thursday at 7 at the Colonial as we fast approach an era where there are no first-hand witnesses of the Holocaust left to pass on the memory of one of the most tragic and terrifying times in the world's history. Yeah, all right, uh, we'll move on now in the stories. Back to the close-up we go and talk uh, a few things on a lighter note part of this uh, gallery walk edition here. Still plenty of events going on in downtown and now one in Westminster as well. Plenty of events to see this weekend as well, including the Wyndham Orchestra, who've added some fresh talent to their roster with the inclusion of choral singers from Kern Hatton Homes in Westminster is where they'll be performing in just a few short hours. For more on the story, we spoke with uh, Kern Hatton's development team along with orchestra maestro Hugh Keelan himself. Well, the particular joy of this concert that we're doing, Enchanted Hills is what we're calling it, is that it's a collaboration between the Wyndham Orchestra and the kids at Kern Hatton. We're bringing lots of different collaborative strands together, local history, Kern Hatton and all the accomplishments that are going on up there and the possibilities for the children and the possibilities for ourselves, there's something here for everybody. Tickets for tonight's event are by donation at the door, which means there's still plenty of time to attend. Uh, for any of you watching live on 545 Live, in the meantime, if the orchestra has sparked your interest, you can find more from our interview with Hugh, which includes all the details on the orchestra's citizen composer campaign, which will see three uh, lucky locals have their own original orchestral works performed uh, in full concert style by the Wyndham Orchestra. It's all on our Facebook page, brattleboro.tv.org. All right, we'll move on now. Speaking of weekend items, this weekend, Brattleboro Area Hospice is set to kick off their cherished goods auction, something uh, I took to the video wall to explain yesterday as part of BCTV's weekly interactive video calendar release and something I've got a clip of for you right now. It's going to fill the halls of the VFW in Brattleboro with good cheer as the event's a patented mix of both silent and live auction items it includes a new twist this year. Uh, the addition of hand-painted refurbished mirrors, which have been embellished by local artists and are now up for bid. That does it for a, a live remote broadcast edition from the Brattleboro Film Festival Latches kickoff here on 545 Live. But remember, we'll be back all next week with a series of new web releases. In the meantime, it's been a dreary day, but I'd still like to get a look at the weather courtesy of the high school's morning news advisory broadcast team, BUHS TV. Saturday, we have a high of 62 and a low of 33. It will be mostly sunny with a 10% chance of rain. There will be a mild wind from the south to southwest. On Sunday, we have a high of 41 and a low of 21, with again a 10% chance of rain. There will be a north to northwest wind at 18 miles per hour. That's all I have for you. Back to the desk. Fast. I better uh, sign off here and let you get out there and enjoy this gallery walk weekend. But uh, in the meantime, be sure to check us out uh, again at brattleborotv.org so you can subscribe, get all uh, the videos that go up throughout the week, and then we'll sum it all up for you in another broadcast next week. BCTV, Comcast Channel 8 at 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time. In the meantime, thanks for watching.
has been Clutch Talk, produced by the Broadcast Journalism Class at Landmark College. Thank you for watching.